Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss exosomes and clarify the various products available as well as the distinctions between them. Now, the vast majority of everything that's out there is either a conditioned media or just a raw secret tone product. And when it comes to exosomes, most of the products out there are just conditioned material and raw secret tones. Now, very few products are actually a pure exosome product. Now, raw secret tone product uh, is when someone takes the amniotic fluid. They, they basically just filter it through and they give it back to you. Now, the reason why I put this diagram out there is so you clearly understand that it's very difficult to isolate a pure exosome. And it requires this very, very last step that's on bottom here. So when you start off with culturing cells, if, if you go with that route on culturing cells, which is the best way to purify a stem cell, because uh, if I take bone marrow from somebody, the amount of stem cells that are in there are 0.000001%. Now, in an average 40-year-old person, if I do it from fat, 0.00001%. Uh, it's not that many more that are there. When I culture them, I purify the stem cell, and now I have given you a purification, a pure stem cell. So we produced a pure mesenchymal stem cell. Now, in the case of ours, we call it an umbilical cord lining stem cell. And then from there, we put them in a condition which you'll see right here, the very, very first graph, uh, the stuff that's on top of those Petri dishes. Now, those dish dishes are called flask. And then from there, uh, if we take just a very, very top portion of it and just collect that while we're growing it in, it's a conditioned media. Now, that means that the media were conditioned. The food that we feed them was conditioned by these cells. Then all we did was isolate that. And I can give you that. You can say that's an exosome because there's exosomes in there, but it's but in theory, uh, there's a bunch of other stuff in there. It's uh, expelled recycled food from the cell. Now, if we go a step further and we start purifying it by centrifuging it down, then we get a secret tone, which basically uh, gives me a little bit of everything. There's exosomes, a lot more purified exosomes in there, but. There's also a bunch of different factors in there, depending on the cell type, depending on the way you grew it up. And then it captures that portion. That's what we call a secret tome. And depending on the way you make that secret tome, you can purify it even further, uh, which are some steps that we do with an ultra purification step. But then if you really want to capture just pure exosomes, you then target the markers that we talked about earlier. Now, the best known and best known separation techniques are using CD9, CD63, and CD81. Now, these are proteins on the outside of the cell. <clears throat> we can attach a bead to it. The magnetic bead uh, then pulls only those or it negatively selects for other population types. And then we capture that. When you do that, you'll be blown away by how much lower, how many less total exosomes you actually truly have. So what's out there? Well, we talked about amniotic fluid are in there and amniotic fluid, uh, if you think about it, it's, it's really not abundant in stem cells. Uh, it's a filter. Once again, it's a barrier and it's a filter and it's mostly epithelial cells. Now remember, the filter in our body or the cell type is an epithelial cell. There's umbilical cord ground up tissue. Many people have them. They talk about their secretome, their exosomes. Very inconsistent because remember, donor to donor variants. You have one donor, you're going to produce 100, uh, 200 vials from one donor. Then you have to go to another donor, then another donor. Every single one of us are completely different. Our kids are completely different, which is, you know, neat about biology. Bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells. The only problem is with the older donors. Let's say uh, you get it from somebody that's 40, and then you actually grow them up and you age them. Now, I'll show you the data on this. And a lot of them lack a lot of testing. 
Uh, placenta is a filter, once again, similar to the amniotic and the amnion, uh, not abundant in MSCs. You have to isolate the MSCs from there. Uh, and it's inconsistent with being a filter. And once again, if something that you cannot grow up in abundance to produce this master bank, a master working bank, it's not an easy task in there. And the amount of testing that's needed. Now, plant-based technology. I hate it when people come up to me and say, you're transferring human tissue from one to another, transferring human genes. You can cause infection. You can cause disease. Well, guess what? You can get sick as sick as can be with plants. You can have transfer of yeast and fungal, which is now transpiring like crazy. The amount of infections that are out there now, you can get bacterial infections from plants. And once again, the most important aspect of it is how effective is a plant that contains a plant cell wall, not a cell membrane uh, to that of a human being. They're different protein sequences. So how efficient is that going to be? When we grow up cells, human cells, we don't use plant growth factors or plant cytokines. We use human re recombinants. It's the way to go. Fat cells are pro-inflammatory in nature. They work in some instances, but once again, you have to obtain fat. You have to grow up the cells and they become old. They do become old. It becomes an issue. In contrast, we prioritize umbilical cord lining stem cells for the reliability and effectiveness. By utilizing human-derived factors, we ensure the quality of our products.